actually, if we want to start with, um, let's see, Kevin is not here. So let's go with um, Joe and then Shane, if you all want to give some updates um, and any feedback requests um, for the community. And then we've got two questions from John that we can then discuss after. Sounds good to me. I can get started. Um, over the last couple of weeks, uh, the Service Mesh Hub team's focus has kind of shifted to some internal projects. Um, but that said, uh, we have still merged a handful of usability improvements. Um, one such improvement is uh, has to do with the statuses on our resources, specifically the access policy. Um, we've started enumerating the workloads and the traffic targets that are selected um, by those access policies through the um, service accounts that they match on. Uh, so that just gives you a better kind of bird's eye view of which um, workloads have access to which uh, services so you can tell the effect that your security policies are actually having. Um, and additionally, uh, this is just merged. It will be in the 0 0.90 release. Uh, we will have validation schema on our CRDs. Um, so that will uh, be a, a big usability improvement for um, you know, handwritten YAML. Um, help us uh, avoid writing typos when we're going through our own internal testing and hopefully help out our users as well. Um, App Mesh is still in progress. Uh, the Discovery PR uh, actually just rebased uh, after having merged some of the uh, kind of more structural changes that we made to support it. Um, but the App Mesh Discovery should be merged shortly as well. And that should be in 090 or 091 uh, before we move on to like the traffic policy translation. That's the next story there. And I believe that's it. I think that's what we've been up to for the last couple of weeks. Well, are there any open, um, uh, any open kind of like uh, issues or anything that you're looking for community feedback on? Uh, we've had a couple of uh, kind of like uh, feature requests and questions come in from the community. Um, yeah, uh, it, it would be great if people could check in there. There's nothing kind of open right now. Um, but yeah, like as you're testing, feel free to file some issues. Uh, we had a great discussion in Slack yesterday um, about a, a problem the user was having with, um, I believe it was, uh, the way that our destination rules assume MTLS. So expect some changes there as well. Uh, might have to introduce kind of like a settings construct in Service Mesh Hub, or perhaps uh, we'll use like an annotation driven config. Um, always uh, open to feedback. That's one of the most recent issues. I can link it in the chat in the Zoom call or I'll even put it in the, uh, the meeting notes. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, and actually, um, uh, if you can give a little more context on what that was, I think um, this might be a good place for it to say like this came up and it's actually, if it's prompting some change um, or you know, change in how, how something works, that might be a good, this might be a good place to kind of just bring it up and discuss. Yeah, for sure. Um, so currently, like the Service Mesh Hub Federation system um, will, um, it'll assume that you want to have MTLS enabled um, on your destination rules to the to the uh, remote cluster. Um, and uh, this is, you know, a good assumption in most cases, since that's the kind of federation model that we support today is uh, shared trust. So we expect them to be able to communicate over MTLS. However, this might not always be the case. Um, and our uh, user Antonio Bourbon suggested that we could perhaps add an annotation to services which we would uh, not like to federate with MTLS enabled. Um, internally, we've had a little bit of discussion about it, um, whether we wanna go with that kind of annotation on the service config, or if instead we would like to um, like uh, apply a, a setting CRD to service mesh hub, which would be able to inform kind of like the default behavior that users might expect say whether they want MTLS on or off for these federated um, destination rules, uh, or if it like would be more useful for users to be able to do this in kind of a one-off basis. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm not sure if anybody has any, any feedback about that uh, point in particular. I know in Glue, um, there have been some like pros and cons to having kind of a central settings construct uh, as opposed to letting users kind of on the fly uh, just kind of slap an annotation on to tweak behavior uh, here and there for kind of edge case services. Um, maybe something we need more data for, but I'm curious if, any, if anybody uh, has any thoughts to that end. If you prefer to have configuration through annotations or more of like centralized driven config through like globalized settings uh, for features well, like when, this. When, when you say globalized, you mean that it applies to every service crossing between the, the cluster boundaries? Is that 
Is that the right. implication of the? Yeah, the implication there yeah. would be that like uh, as like a default, like a global default, and then like uh, kind of like opt out on a one-off basis, maybe with like a traffic policy um, on like a particular service versus a uh, configuration that's a bit looser with just an annotation on a service. It's kind of like the opposite extreme. Well, I guess having a global default is, is always a good thing, but um, that's, I mean, that's almost a little bit of the, you know, icing on the cake kind of thing. I think more often than not, you're going to find the need to have um, more granularity that uh, um, even, even if you think about the fact that if you have a given cluster, you're not always going to be necessarily federating that with a single peer. You might mm -hmm. be federating that with multiple peers. And in some, some of the peers you might only be able to do, you only want to do MTLS with, and some of the other peers maybe you don't. So I think the granularity is almost certainly going to become a requirement at some point. Um, but a, a global default is always a good thing too. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, so I'm I'm kind of hearing that like the global default uh, seems like something we'd want to be able to support, but like kind of uh, maybe it's kind of an argument against the sort of one-off configuration at the service level, um, that kind of multiple peers um, case that you raised, right? Like maybe we'd want to be able to select uh, which destinations receive which um, MTLS option. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking more. I think from the perspective of the global, I would say that the, that's a sort of a, not necessarily a hard requirement and nice to have, but the, to be able to specify it more on a, on a destination basis, at least, um, would be, um, would be probably required. I think also this is going to, so one of the other things that I was thinking about as you're saying this is, I mean, isn't it more complicated than just MTLS on or MTLS off because there are a couple different flavors of TLS you have, whether you're doing client side or server side or, or right. maybe not even TLS at all, right? Mm -hmm. Is that is that factored into the discussion already or is that uh, a, an additional uh, component of the evaluation? Uh, yeah, that's definitely um, something that we should consider as we kind of like implement a solution for this. That's a good point. Yeah, it's it's definitely more rich than kind of like on off. Um, yeah, because because glue. Yeah. I mean, I, if I recall correctly, glue already has some of those primitives of being able to specify which side is sort of the, for lack of a better word, the master of the TLS or which side owns the certificates. Right? Mm -hmm. if, if I'm correct. Yeah, I believe so. so and, and this this might influence. Uh, I think Mihai brought up last week. Mihai isn't able to attend. I think he had also some maybe some discussions in this area because it also affects the sort of the limited trust case a little bit, um, perhaps depending on how you're going to do this. Because he was a, he was going to need to add some uh, API things with respect to when you have the full um, root trust versus the um, limited trust and how the certificates come in. So there's possibility what you're describing has an influence in what he's doing as well. So um, I guess we'll definitely, is, is, is the, within that issue, I didn't pull it up yet, within that issue, Joe, is it, is your sort of, have you captured your, your, your sort of current um, path that you're following or your current plan of record or is that, is it just capturing the issue itself? Uh, not yet. Right now, it's just capturing the issue and kind of an initial proposal from the user who filed it. But I can definitely add the context uh, that I brought, and it would be great if you could chime in as well. Okay. Yeah, I think we <clears throat> we should look at that, and especially I think we want um, to contrast. And Mihai, again, Mihai is not here, but Daniel is. I think those guys want to contrast a little bit with what they were doing for Living Trust as well. So that cool. sounds perfect. Thank you. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, thanks, Joe. Uh, Shane, do you have a, something on um, WebAssembly? Yeah, absolutely. So on the WebAssembly front, the big ticket item is that we got Rust support into master. So uh, we have uh, support for Rust filters now, which is great. Uh, we haven't actually cut a release for it just yet. We were waiting for one or two things from the upstream um, Rust SDK. But there are a couple of users who are just building straight off of master and we're having some good reports that it's it's working for them early. So that's always good to hear. We are hoping to get a release out in the next few days. 
Um, the other big news that we're really excited about is that the um, the author of the Tiny Go library has actually uh, opened a pull request, which has also been merged. So now we have Tiny Go support. So anyone who wants to use Go to build uh, Envoy filters in Wasm via Go, that's now uh, a feature that we have. And again, users have been uh, trying it out and so far so good. We're getting some really good feedback. Um, in terms of feedback from the community, we've also gotten some good feedback on the OCI image spec. So uh, that's always good to see. And we've uh, made, taken a couple action items from that. And you know, it's, a, it's a great collaborative process. We're seeing a lot more action. Um, our WASM channel in the community Slack is also you know, seeing a huge uptick in traffic, which is great. A lot of folks coming in and asking for ideas, helping each other out, which we love to see. So it's, it's awesome to see this kind of like buzz around it. Uh, I think that's all for me on WebAssembly. Cool. Is there anything, um, are there any other um, opens or pendings or areas in which you'd like feedback on or you need some more engagement from the community? Um, not right now. The OCI image spec is the big one that we're trying to solicit feedback on. Um, we, we have seen an uptick in community pull requests as well, which is great to see. Another user just added stateful set deployments uh, as a feature, which is great to see. Uh, so we're, we're very appreciative of all of the community efforts there and, you know, we're supporting everyone who wants to get pull requests up. And, uh, you know, just come ping us in the Slack channel or open pull requests and we can, we can work together to get any features you want. We are looking for, you know, feature requests, enhancements, and we're kind of just working on them in the priority order of how much demand there is for them. Cool. Thanks. Um, and so let's see here. Um, Last week, uh, we announced Glue 1.5. Um, there's updates there for open source and enterprise. Um, uh, but if uh, Kevin, oh, Kevin's on. So Kevin, if you want to give just um, a couple of highlights on the, uh, from the open source side. With respect to the 1.5 or things yeah. we're working on currently, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the 1.5. Really quick, like uh, any, like so, something major, I'll link in the, um, I'll link in the change logs and stuff in here. And then kind of like, um, you know, what's kind of, in, what's, what else um, we're working on on the OSS side would be great. Sure. Yeah, we should definitely like the change log because the, the high level, the bulk majority of the work is user improvements, uh, bug fixes, security updates, things along that nature. Um, but some of the new features include like gRPC JSON transcoding. Um, we moved rate limit CRDs or created a CRD for rate limit config so that you can reference it. Um, that allows it's like more templatized rate limiting config. Um, and then there's some, you know, the integrations, some glue fed stuff that Joe could talk about further as well. Uh, but I really, I think it's, it's just a better use to link the change log to get better sense. And then can you talk about from an open source side, what's kind of, um, uh, what are some of the next things in progress? Sure. Um, we're working on a new rate limit API that handles uh, like wild carding and, and missing descriptors. Uh, like not, we're still going to support the old API, but just one that's a little more flexible for, for fields that are missing uh, for advanced rate limiting use fit cases. Uh, we're updating our XDOF implementation and server to handle more complex flows that handle uh, like Boolean logic and in ORing services together. Right now, if you define multiple kinds of authentication on a route, um, all of them have to succeed for the route to be seen, uh, to be authorized. Um, that's being split uh, so you can control that more with more granularity. Um, yeah, that's, those are the two of the big ones we're working on now. Cool, thanks. Um, and then we've got two questions from John um, here. John, do you wanna? Uh, yeah, I think the first one is really just uh, uh, maybe a question on direction. Um, I know a lot of groups have bounced around with how they want to do in installation of or deployment of their main modules. So uh, has this group talked about moving to like an operator framework versus, um, well, I guess you've transitioned that a little bit. You had some some CLI scripts and then you have the mesh CTL that handles it now. Is there is that the long-term strategy to stick with that? Is there been discussion about moving to like an operator um, a framework that'll manage the life cycle of the Surface Mesh Hub modules or, or just, uh, I just kind of wanted some opinion on direction uh, where you think you're headed or what you think you're planning to do there. Is this for the installation of Service Mesh Hub itself? Yeah. Yeah, um, so I think that uh, like our, our main focus for now is, um, you know, like installation through Helm. 
uh, upgrades through Helm um, and supporting a workflow that is uh, ideally very simple and uh, compatible with like GitOps. Um, not necessarily uh, focused on like uh, an operator framework in the near term, uh, although like kind of over time, especially if the community continues to go back in that direction, um, I think that that would make sense for us to uh, look at at that point. But for now, uh, like Helm and then Mesh CTL for um, like cluster registration is like the primary workflow that we're targeting. Uh, yeah, can I ask um, what, well, we're talking about an operator to do what exactly? Um, an operator that uh, might handle the lifecycle management of um, the, um, the service mesh hub modules themselves. So, I mean, as a perfect contrast, since we're all familiar with Istio, Istio, um, they have a little CLI that uh, can deal to deploy the operator and the operator CRD, but then the operator itself takes care of all the mesh config yeah. and all the Istio modules and sort of everything from there on handles lifecycle management. So yeah. I'm not necessarily asking for this. I just kind of want to understand, right. you so know, your- mesh hub right now is, uh, rel is, is pretty simple. Uh, in terms of what needs to be deployed, it's really um, just a set of, of RBAC configurations and then uh, you get a few pods deployed. Um, it's really a very simple uh, deployment where Istio, you know, the, the Istio Helm chart has a lot of moving features and uh, or moving parts and um, features exposed as well as there being um, some concern around how to effectively achieve things like upgrades uh, without downtime. None of those things would be a concern for Service Mesh Hub uh, given its current implementation. So I don't know um, if there's a strong need. Um, you could use something like Argo or Flux for a pretty uh, painless um, integration of the Helm chart into CICD. And I, I think that would, that, you know, you could basically get all of your lifecycle management needs through that. Okay, so so that that's fine. You're sticking with Helm right now. I, again, this isn't. We weren't proposing that this is a requirement. I just wanted to understand. All right. You know your, I think your what direction. I'm trying to communicate is that it's um, it's it would be recommended um, to you know given the simplicity of the current chart to to just leverage that. Um, if we find that things get more complex, particularly if there's a need to do like uh, live upgrades um, where, you know, we, we want to avoid, you know, potential outages that can be caused by reinstallation of components to cluster. Um, you know, at that point, I think, you know, maybe we'll look into, you know, more robust. We have talked, discussed using an operator for the cluster registration piece, because that is something that uh, is not so simple to do with Helm. Uh, you know, which involves creating resources across multiple clusters. Um, but the, it would be separate than managing the life cycle of Service Mesh Hub itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I, I recognize that. I mean, ultimately, that uh, the upgrade is the perfect, you know, the poster child example. And, and that's part of the, that's one of the ones that turned Istio a lot of how to handle the upgrade. Yes. Um, case. So that's, the, so there's a good chance uh, this will come up again in the future, but at least for now, it sounds like uh, uh, Helm is the, what, what to stick with. Right. Because, you know, in particular, because um, upgrading S service mesh hub should not cause result in any outages. Uh, there's no like, you know, service mesh hub being offline should not prevent Envoy from getting configuration. And, you know, where Istio being offline can be a more, um, more of a critical, uh, you know, can, can result in outages. Uh, uh, I don't know that I would agree with that assessment. Istio has the same, I mean, Istio has the same model of uh, Envoy will persist the config it has until the control planes back up. Um, and Istio is controlling, Istio ends up controlling inter, intra cluster things just like you control inter cluster things. So I'm not sure I would agree with that, you know, argument that, that you're less important or less impactful, I should say, than, than Istio. Um, but anyway, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm happy with your answer. I'm not trying to push for any particular thing. I just kind of wanted to understand um, the, the, the direction that you were thinking of.
Jean, I don't have anything more. I, oh, you've got yeah, the so, other so we've, question. Yeah, unfortunately, um, uh, Mihai um, uh, wasn't able to join today. He he was going to try to maybe show some samples of the code he was working on. He he, he Daniel and he have um, most of this coded up, but they've been having some trouble getting everything actually working in a working environment, so they weren't quite ready to post the PR. Um, Daniel's on the call, so I'm sure he'll jump in if he wants to add anything, um, have anything to add. But I just wanted to quickly say that, um, you know, we're uh, not going quite as fast as we want, but I'm thinking uh, probably by the time the next meeting comes around, we'll have something solid to share. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, so that's it for the things that were on the agenda. Is there anything else from folks on the call today? Going once, going twice. All right. See you next time. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye.